How many glad you saved? Amen. Amen. All right, Matthew chapter 6. We'll pick up there in verse number 5. Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 5. So I'll stand for just a moment as we reverence the reading of God's Word. Matthew chapter 6. All right, notice there in verse number 5, the Bible says this, And when thou prayest, now the Lord is doing the Sermon on the Mount, right? And uh, he's talking about prayer here. He says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Now, the Lord is not condemning public prayer. All right, in the New Testament church, prayer is supposed to be public, right? I mean, the Bible even says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting, right? So public prayer is something the Lord uh, not only uh, commands, but He doesn't condemn it here. But what He's saying here is He says, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray standing in the synagogues in the street, corners of the street, that they may be seen of men. That means don't get down in the middle of Walmart, lay it out on the ground, praying to the Lord, all right? Uh, you know, probably not a great idea to do that. He says, Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. That word closet has the idea of an inner chamber. So the idea of you getting in a closet inside here of your house. Uh, that's exactly what it's talking about. It means closet. All the King James critics want to criticize that word, but uh, that word means exactly what it says, closet, an inner chamber. When thou prayest, enter thy closet, and when thou hast what? Shut the door, thy door. See, a lot of times we get in to pray, but we go into our closet, but we don't shut the door. I'm going to be honest with you, man. I, the more and more I'm staying away from technology, the more and more I'm realizing the devil has just had a heyday with it. I mean, you can't hardly pray without somebody texting her. Man, I'd find myself praying, and then all of a sudden, th- oh, man, I've got to text them right now. When you go to pray, shut your door. Right. Shut it off. Right. Get in there and, and, and don't worry about the world. You're talking to the Lord. If I'm sitting there having a conversation with my wife, and I'm saying every five seconds, I'm saying, hang on a second, honey, what, what do you need? Or, hang on, i got to answer. Take her. She's not going to feel like I'm really listening or I'm really talking to her, right? right? Same way with the Lord. Shut the door. Pray to thy Father which is in secret. Now, here's what's interesting to me. And thy Father which heareth in secret shall reward thee openly. See it. Did I quote that verse right? Did I say that verse right? See it. Seeth in secret. Can I say this to you? It's not nearly as important about what you're saying when you pray as it is the fact that you're just doing it. It doesn't say, Thy Father which heareth in secret shall reward thee openly. He says, Thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But, verse number 7, When you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore lack unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask Him. Notice the thought here is, is don't spend a whole bunch of time just talking and talking and talking and just, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for 45 minutes today. I'm going to make a determination. I'm going to pray for at least an hour. Don't waste your time trying to fill up a bunch of space. Pray, make your request known before the Lord. You only think, well, if I pray for an hour as opposed to 30 minutes, then God's going to hear me more because I prayed for an hour. That's literally not what the Bible says. The Bible says that the heathen think that they shall be heard because of their much speaking. He says, when you pray, don't be like them. He says, be not therefore like them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask Him. Do you think God knows how to meet your needs? All right, then why are you spending a whole bunch of time letting Him know about everything you need? He knows what you need. Lord, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but i got a bill coming up next month. And uh, just in case you didn't know, it's 600 and whatever, you know, dot. he knows all that, right? Now, notice verse number 9. After this manner, therefore pray ye. We don't have time to go there this morning, but Luke 11 
Jesus is praying. When we find this story, Jesus is praying and the disciples in Luke 11 verses 1 and 2 literally tell the Lord, they ask the Lord, Lord, teach us to what? Pray. Pray. Teach us how to pray. And Jesus now has what many call the Lord's Prayer, but it's not really the Lord's Prayer because He never prays it. He tells us to pray it. He says, notice, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to preach to you. I may be a little bit more in a teaching mode this morning, but I want to preach slash teach to you this morning. I just want to teach you how to pray. It's not some kind of big formula. It's not some kind of long thing that we got to go through and take years and years to learn. But I've been getting to hold more in my personal life the matter of prayer. I've been making prayer more of an issue in my personal life. And so I just want to talk to you a little bit more about praying this morning. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. Thank you for all that you do for us. Lord, I pray you help me now. Hide me behind the cross. I am fully aware that I cannot do anything without you this morning. So Lord, I pray that you just do something with me. And Lord, I pray that you let the Holy Ghost flow through me. Fill me up, give me an unction, and Father, we'll give you the praise for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. <clears throat> now, I understand this morning that we're all Bible believers, right? We are dispensational. We understand that there are divisions in Scripture, blah, blah, blah. We, we know all that, right? But what I think that sometimes we do as Bible believers is sometimes we get in such a way that, well, if this isn't in the Pauline epistles, then we can absolutely not get anything out of it. And we will literally steal, uh, or excuse me, allow the devil to steal away blessings from us uh, because we are high. Listen, the Bible says that knowledge does what? Puffeth up, right? Knowledge puffeth up. And so the devil will use, you know, we pride ourselves, we are Bible believers. We know how to dispensationally divide. We know where it goes this. We know how this works here and that goes there. I mean, we know it all, right? But I think sometimes what happens is is the devil takes that knowledge and will steal from us blessings in the Bible because we think we've got to overanalyze and over and just over scour everything and just rightly divide it all the way down to a T. And I'm for that. I believe in rightly dividing. But at the same time, if literally the God of heaven, the God of the universe, I mean, the God that we are praying to, if He tells us how we ought to pray, don't you think we ought to pay attention to it? Amen. Amen. Well, but it's on the Sermon on the Mount. Well, you know, but it, it talks about the coming kingdom and all that kind of stuff. Okay, I understand all that. We'll talk about that in a minute. But don't you think that if the disciples sat there and said, Lord, teach us to pray, and He said, all right, let me teach you. That ain't for us. I'm, I'm not going to take anything from that. That ain't for me. Man, I, I was reading H.A. Uh, Ironside this morning, and H.A. Ironside said, uh, he's a dispensationalist, you know, been dead for years now, obviously, but he said that one of the greatest tragedies is that we've allowed the devil to steal away the blessings of the Lord's Prayer because we do not think that it has any truth for this age. Now notice this here. He says, he goes through all these things. When you pray, don't stand in a street corner and do it to be seen of men. When you do it, go into your closet. Pray in your secret. Your Father which sitteth in secret, reward thee openly. He says all these things. But then he gets down to the actual prayer. And he says, after this manner, therefore pray ye. Now notice, it does not say here that we've got to say exactly what's going on. It doesn't say we have to pray this exact prayer. We're not Catholic, right? It's not like every time we pray, well, uh, I wake up in the morning, let me say the Lord's Prayer. Oh, it's noontime, let me say the Lord's Prayer. Right before we go to bed, let's say the Lord's Prayer. Well, you might as well just throw in, you know, Hail, uh, Hail Marys and all that kind of stuff and light some candles. We're not supposed to vainly repeat this prayer. But Jesus does say, after this what? This manner, therefore, pray ye. It's almost like the Lord has given us an outline or a study guide on when we pray. Here's a good way to pattern your prayer. And we're going to dissect it this morning. You ready? Let's look at it. He said... After this manner, therefore, in verse number 9, pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Do you know the very first thing that Jesus said you ought to start off with when you're praying? You ought to start off with worshiping the Lord. 
Everybody alive this morning? Everybody okay? <laughs> when you pray, listen, when we pray, you know what you ought to do? You ought to get in and when you start praying, the first thing you ought to do is just say, Lord, I just want to praise you for who you are, not for what you've done. See, that's the problem. We think, well, man, God's been good to me. He's, got, he's given me a car. He's given me a house. He's given me a church. He's given me this, 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 this. And we start praising God for what he's done. But here's the reality of it. If your car burns up, if your house burns up, if your bank account goes empty, and you're health, and you're like Job, and you're laying out there in a pile of ashes with bulls all over you, God is still good. Amen. Amen. He is still worthy to be praised. If you died and went to hell and burned forever, God is still good. God is still worthy to be praised. In this prayer, it's not praising and worshiping Him for what He has done. It's praising and worshiping Him for who He is. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Lord, you are a good God. Lord, you are a wonderful God. Your power is unlike any other power. Your name is above every other name. Your word is above. Is everybody getting the idea here? Uh, your presence is unlike any other presence. Your salvation, somebody say amen right there, is unlike any other salvation. God, you are a God that is worthy to be praised because of who you are, not just because of what you've done. See, if Jesus, the Bible says over there in Acts chapter number 10 and verse 42, that Jesus went about doing good. And boy, you read the Gospels and it's hard not to realize just how good Jesus was, right? But understand, if he'd have never healed a lame man, if he'd have never healed a blind man, if he'd have never raised Lazarus, if he'd have never turned the water into wine, if he'd have never done any of that, it's not about the fact that he did the miracle. The miracles was not what made the man. The man is what made the miracles. Uh, he didn't do those miracles and then become God. No, he was already God. He was already good. He was already perfect. He was already high and holy. Amen? Amen. So when you go in to pray, maybe instead of just say, going right in, Lord, I need this, 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 this. Lord, here's my laundry list of stuff I need. Maybe you ought to just go in and say, Lord, before I even ask you for anything, I just want to thank you for who you are. Amen. When my kids or my wife or whoever needs something, they'll come in sometimes and they'll just Start talking real sweet. And you know what they're doing? I don't know what they call it up in Michigan, but down south we call it buttering somebody up. Yeah. You know what that is? Boy, I just love why you've been wearing your hair lately. <laughs> Boy, I'm telling you what, just whatever you just did, that was great. I mean, you're just, you're so good at that. Hey, by the way, do you mind if I get, you know, da-da-da-da, Levi will come in. Le- Levi is, is me incarnate. I mean, it is just scary. And man, he'll come in, and, uh, and, 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 and I deleted some of his PlayStation games off the PlayStation, just some stuff he's not going to play anymore. And so he comes in, and he, you know, he's upset about it. And you know, he took it pretty well, but he was upset about it. He goes, and he was just sitting there. He goes, I've, just, I've invested so much money into that game. And I think like... I think like all in all, like with gift cards and stuff, he's got like 40 bucks in that game, like all in all. I've just invested so much time, and I just was working so hard on it. And he's just sitting there. He goes, but I mean, if, if, if you feel like that's what we need to do, and I'm sitting there thinking something's about to come. <laughs> something's coming. He said, he sat there and he said, do you think since you deleted that game that maybe we could go to Walmart and get the Lego set I've been wanting? He said, it's right around $40. <laughs> you know what that is? See, when you go in a state of submission to the authority that's over you, you are much more likely to get what you want out of somebody. Right? Right? Maybe you ought to just approach the Lord every now and then. Listen, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm human. All right? I have a sin nature. I get sick of people. The only time their name ever flashes across my screen is when they need something. I can look at people and I can see, oh, who's calling you? Oh, oh, that's so-and-so. Yeah, they need something. Y'all know what I'm... Anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? 
oh, so-and-so is trying to get a hold of you. Yeah, yeah, it's that time of month again. Or, you know, oh, yeah, they, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. And, you know, we help people. We want to be there for people. Listen, but understand, you get, you get sick of people. The only time they ever contact you, the only time they ever come around is when they need something. How do you think the Lord feels? How do you think the Lord feels with the fact that all only time we ever think to pray is when we're in dire need? Praying is much more than just asking God for stuff. Praying is communing. I've said it a million times. Bible reading is God talking to you. But prayer is you talking to God. If you have all the Bible reading but none of the prayer, she's rattling, saying amen with the tic-tacs, amen. <laughs> if you have all the Bible reading but no prayer... That is a monologue, not a dialogue. If you have all the praying but no Bible reading, that is a monologue, not a dialogue. Understand, there has to be prayer and Bible reading so that you and God are communicating back and forth to each other. And when you go to pray, maybe instead of starting out with everything that you need, maybe just go in there and say, Lord, I just want to, before I ask you for anything, I just want to praise you for all that you've done and not just the things you've done, but simply for who you are. Right? So notice here, then he says, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. The second thing you ought to pray for is notice thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We understand this is Jewish and the coming kingdom, and I'm not looking for a kingdom to come. I'm looking for a Savior to come from heaven, all that kind of stuff. But understand what Jesus is saying here is he said, then when you pray, instead of asking God to do all the things that you want him to do, first praise him, thank him for who he is, and then why don't you pray that instead of all the things that you want to happen, why don't you pray that all the things that God wants to happen happens? When's the last time you just looked up and said, Lord, I pray that what you want happens? I've been, I've been uh, Brother Sammy Allen, and y'all know, some of y'all know Brother Sammy Allen, and he wasn't exactly our stripe, but he was God's man. I mean, he was, he was God's man for sure. And I asked him one time, he had a strong prayer life. And I asked Brother Allen one time, I said, Brother Allen, what's the secret to a strong prayer life? And he, looked, he sat there for a minute and looked over. It's exactly what he said. He said, when I get up in the mornings, I don't like to talk to anybody else until I've talked to the Lord. He said, I want to be the first person I talk to when I get up in the morning. So I've been making it a habit the past couple of days that whenever I get up in the morning, first thing I'm laying in bed, first thing I do when I'm laying in bed, I'm just talking to the Lord. Just talking to Him, just praying, using this exact pattern right here. Lord, thank you for letting me open up my eyes another day. Thank you for letting me live for you another day. Thank you for giving me breath for another day. I used to hear those old preachers, mountain preachers, they'd say, before my feet even hit the floor, I thank the Lord for another day to live. I used to hear that all the time. And boy, I never realized just how, I mean, let's just be honest, folks. If it wasn't for God putting breath in your lungs every morning, you wouldn't get up in the morning. Without me, you can't do nothing. I mean, we would literally... Go a million pe- I mean, we'd go a million miles a minute in every direction if it was. The Bible says that the Word of God is literally making all things hold together. It's all Him. And so when's the last time you looked up and said, Lord, I just want your will to be done. Lord, whatever you want with my life. Not what I want, not what I think. I- Listen, let's just be honest. We'll get down to the part where we start praying for some needs, but a lot of our needs are not really needs. They're wants. When's the last time you just looked up and said, Lord, whatever you want, whatever your will is, whatever you want me to do, before I start mentioning anything I want, Lord, what do you want? Well, that changes the perspective of prayer a lot. I'm going to be honest with you. My prayer life has been something that I've needed to work on for a long time. And now even looking back, even the the times of prayer that I was in, I realized how self-centered it was. Praying is so much more than just focusing on what you want. It's focusing on what God wants. Lord, what do you want out of my life? What, even Jesus, when he's in the garden, he says, not my will, but thine be done. Right? 
Now stay with me. I knew I knew we wouldn't be shouting and running the aisles and squalling and bawling this morning. I knew I knew it wasn't just going to happen with this message. If y'all wanted to shout and squall and bawl, y'all should have done during the singing because it ain't going to get much better than this. <laughs> Notice he says there in verse number eleven. Now we get down to the needs. He said, "Give us this day our daily bread." That's an interesting thought, right? Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I've got more than daily enough. In, in, in the back here, I've got more than just to last me for the day. I'll be honest with you. I've probably got more hanging off my stomach to last me for a couple of days. Uh, you know, if, uh, if pe- pe- people say, you ever, are you putting back food in case something bad happens with the economy or, you know, the coronavirus? I said, man, I've been putting back food for a long time. <laughs> Somebody said, why don't you lose some weight and exercise? I said, I've got too much money invested in this stomach for me to just want to get rid of it. Somebody say amen right there. But Jesus said, when you pray, ask the Lord for daily bread. Let me ask you a question. When's the last time you asked the Lord to provide your food for you? It's because we're a bunch of spoiled, rotten Americans. I can take you to some places. I can take you to India and Philippines and some places like that where give us this day our daily bread. That's a prayer that they pray out of necessity. Boy, how ungrateful we are. I'm talking about, I'm talking about people that if they get a piece of chicken that big and a cup of rice, that's what their meal is, and sometimes that's what their meal is for the whole day. When's the last time you looked up and said, Lord, I know I've got plenty of food in the pantry, and I know I've got enough food to last me a week probably, or if I'm in quarantine, two days, but, you know... (laughs) I, we ate, man. We ate good during quarantine. We could quarantine again this year if I, you know, whatever, man. We ate good. As long as Joe's Biden sending the stimulus checks, we're going to eat steaks more and more, amen? <laughs> amen. But you know what? Listen, you know what's going on? We've gotten in a place where just food comes abundantly. We've got more food. We live in a place. You know what somebody said in India? A guy in India said, I want to go to a place. He's talking about America. He said, I'd love to see a place where even the poor people are fat. That's what he said. I'm not a rich man. You go over there, you know what they do? They look at you and they, they see the fatness on your face and they see you know, the belly bulging out and they say, he must have money because he eats as much as he wants. Understand this now. Understand. When's the last time you just prayed and asked the Lord to give you your daily food? Well, I don't have any need of it. See, that's the problem. We in our society, we've gotten to a place where we just don't depend on the Lord anymore. I'm going to tell you why a lot of those old timers knew the Lord in a way that we'll never understand. Because they depended on Him. Right. Right. If Lord, if you don't send the rain, the crops aren't going to grow. So Lord, we've got to have the rain. I've never worried about it raining a day in my life. I've never worried about the crops coming up a day in my life. As long as Bob Ingle's still got grocery stores up there, I'm still going to go up there and get canned beans and canned whatever. I'm right. I don't worry about any of that stuff. But understand, by His hand, the old, the, you know, the old prayer, by His hand we're daily what? Fed. When's the last time you asked the Lord for your daily food? Spoiled, man. We're in a bad way. We're in a bad way in America. You know what I've been praying here lately? I've been praying, Lord, just meet our needs. Amen. Our daily needs. Make sure we've got enough food. Make sure we're able to function. Make sure we're able to do. Listen, you know what I, I, I have needs of? I have need of gas to go all over the meetings. All over the meetings. You'd be amazed at how many times God has supernaturally provided money for me to put gas in my vehicle to go to a meeting. And I got to a place where I just think, I just forgot about it. It was just like I was just expecting it. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, whatever, man, thanks. You know. But understand, God meets your daily needs. Amen. Ask Him to meet your needs. Ask Him for the food. I remember an old story one time, and uh, uh, 
a uh, guy over at Swannanoa Heights Baptist Church, a guy that was pastoring there after BP Bull, Johnny Wright, his missionary up in Iceland. And he was in there, and his grandmother was in there making biscuits. And she was patting those biscuits out. And she said, Lord, help me, help me to make these biscuits and help these biscuits to come out right. And help, help, help this meal to be enough for my family. Help me make these biscuits. And Johnny Wright looked at his grandmother and said, said Ma'am, why in the world are you praying for the Lord to help you make those biscuits? You've made them a million times. And she looked at him and says, Johnny, I thought you was a preacher. Don't you know Jesus said, without me you can't do nothing? We get in a routine sometimes where we just we get on autopilot, man, where we think, man, well, there's just going to be food. There's always going to be this. There's always going to be that. You know, there, there, everything's just going to happen. If everything's going to be back. And we forget to ask the Lord to help us and to provide for us. We rely on the government to provide our needs. We rely on their jobs to provide our needs or whatever it may be. That's exactly where the communists came in. There's a story. Uh, who was the guy down in Cuba? Flip, uh, Fidel Castro. Castro. Yeah, Castro. Whenever my, whenever my mother wouldn't let me do something or whatever, and she said, you're not going to do this or whatever, I'd call her Fidel, you know, or Castro or something. Infidel Castro. <laughs> but anyway. But down there in Fidel, uh, Fidel Castro in Cuba, what he would do is he would go into the schools and he would say... He would look at all the kids and he'd say, pray, pray to God and ask him for ice cream. Pray to God and ask him for ice cream. And he'd make all the kids bow their heads and pray to the Lord for ice cream. And then he'd say, all right, did anybody get any ice cream? No. And he'd say, all right, now ask Castro for ice cream. He'd make all the kids ask him for ice cream. And he'd have his guards come in with AK-47s and all that and bring all the kids ice cream. He said, see, you asked God for ice cream, but you... Ask, if nothing happened, but you asked me for ice cream and, 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 and you know, you got ice cream. And one little kid looked up and said, well, we got ice cream either way, but we asked God first, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Understand, the government and the world and the devil tries to get us to rely on anything other than the Lord. Right, right. I'm almost done here. I know we're dragging this morning. Man, brother, Sir, I wish you'd preached on heaven or preached on something we could all shout about. I'm going to tell you what, what I'm preaching on this morning is going to help you more in your daily life than a lot of other things I could have gone up here and shouted about this morning. Now notice here. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Luke's account says forgive us our sins as we forgive those indebted to us. I can't forgive you of your sins, man. I'm not a priest. You don't come to me in a telephone booth confessing all your sins. Don't come to me confessing all your sins. I don't want to hear them. I got enough sins I'm dealing with. I don't want yours, all right? Now, I understand I'm the pastor, and you know, if you want to talk to me about some things you're going through, that's fine. But unto God, don't tell me all the problems you got. Because you know what will happen? You'll start telling me all your negative stuff, and I'll think, man, we're all just a bunch of dirty, rotten, no good. We might as well just all just you know, jump off a cliff and go on to heaven, all that kind of stuff. You ever meet somebody, you never ask them how they are, because they might tell you? <laughs> hey, how are you? Well, no, please. You know. There's some people I don't ask how they are. Hope you're doing good. And even then there's some, well, I'm not. Let me tell you about it. No, 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 get away from me, man. You know. <laughs> yeah. People all the time, man. All the, listen, I can't forgive you of your sins. You've got to take that up with the Lord. But one of the things about the Christian life is the fact that when we pray, not only should we be asking the Lord to forgive us of our sins that we commit, not so that we can get some kind of, you know, supernatural cleansing uh, for sin, you know, salvation. It's not like the fact, well, if we don't confess our sins or if we die with unconfessed sins, we're not going to go to heaven. No, there's a relationship aspect, right? There's a relationship aspect. It's the fact that if we have... Listen, my sons are always going to be my sons. But our relationship can be affected. But they're always going to be my children. You don't lose your salvation. But understand, in the midst of while you're praying and while you're asking the Lord to forgive you, also, you know what you ought to do? Forgive others. I'm going to tell you what, man. Bitterness will kill you Faster than any cancer could ever do. 
In fact, you do understand that cancer, they have linked cancer to inward stress. Stress is the silent killer. And man, that bitterness and that anger and that unforgiveness that you're harboring in your heart, that'll kill you, man. And when you pray, you know what you ought to do? You ought to go through and say, Lord, I forgive this guy. Lord, I forgive her and I forgive this guy. There's people in your past from years and years ago, you've still not even forgiven them. Well, I just can't forgive them for what they did. Well, aren't you glad God forgave you for what you did? Amen. Well, you just don't know what they did to me. Well, guess what you did to the Lord? Amen. He had to stink and die on a cross for you. All the Lord's asking you to do is just pray for the guy. I died on a cross praying for him. I, you know. Pray for your enemies. Isn't that what he said? That's so hard. Oh, I know. Isn't it just so rough? Don't you just have it so rough? Don't, I mean, boo-hoo, we are just, I mean, just all tore up. I, you mean I've got to pray for that person that hurt me? You mean I need to pray for their well-being and pray for their family and pray that God blesses them? Oh, yeah. Why don't you try that instead of talking about them and constantly, you know, pitching a fit about it and constantly being bitter against them? Life is too short for us to harbor all this unforgiveness in our hearts. I'm not saying you've got to talk to the person and go out to eat with them and be best friends with them. What I am saying is, is if Jesus Christ has forgiven you, then you ought also to forgive others. Amen. And when you're praying, you shouldn't just be seeking how that the Lord can give you forgiveness, but you ought to be looking at how you can forgive others. See, that's the thing. We're so self-centered. We want the Lord to do everything for us, but the same things that God's done for us, we don't want to do for other people. Well, I've been forgiven. I'm redeemed by love divine. Glory, glory, Christ is mine. You know, we'll get in here and shout it out. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm forgiven. Hey, you remember that guy that did that? Oh, yeah, I ain't never forgiven him. Well, he deserves what he's getting. Easy, easy. You ought to be in hell with your back broke this morning. Amen. All right, let's go on. I'm, I'm, I'm basically done. Here we are. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I'm going to be honest with you. I have searched high and low. I've looked. I've prayed. I've tried to cross-reference. The Lord doesn't ever lead us into temptation, right? I mean, it's not like God's just stangling out temptations in front of us. But the Bible says, lead, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. You know what I've been praying? I've been praying, Lord, whatever my path may go, make sure you just lead me away from anything that's going to ensnare me. Lord, keep me away from anything that's going to be a, in my path that's going to hinder my relationship with you. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. You could almost do a cross-reference there, deliver us from evil. You could almost say that that's a prayer for the Lord to come back from the rapture to get us out of this world. Amen. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the power and the kingdom and the glory forever. Amen. It starts out with praise and it ends with praise. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now listen, folks. We're not going to give an altar call this morning. I want everybody to come and pray about how the fact you're not praying, you know, that kind of stuff. I want you to go home this afternoon. I want you to do an evaluation. Get, hey, listen, get a prayer list. Write things out. Follow that outline. You know what I do when I'm praying in the mornings? I'll get that outline. I'll, I will quote the Lord's Prayer in my mind. And as I'm praying the Lord's Prayer in my mind, I'm adding all the other stuff in there. It's an outline. Take that and make it your own. But listen, pray. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Let your requests be made known unto God is what Paul said. You don't have to pray for hours and hours every day. I like what one preacher up in Kentucky said. He says, I don't pray long, but I don't go long without praying. Isn't that right? I don't pray long, but I don't go long without praying. Just pray, pray without ceasing. Pray. Push, man. You know what push stands for? Pray until something happens. Don't give up on, don't give up on praying for Paul. You say, well, the Lord may not answer that prayer request like we want Him to answer. That doesn't matter. We still pray for it. Keep praying for these prayer requests that we've got. Keep making our requests known unto God. Keep worshiping. Just keep communing with God because in these last evil days, we can't afford not to have a strong prayer life. 
We can't afford it. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for your mercy and grace. Thank you, Lord, for letting us be in church this morning. God, I pray you bless our time here together and bring us back safely at 2 o'clock. In Jesus' name, I ask these things. Amen and amen. All right, folks, you are dismissed. I love you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, John Paul. I think I can think of a way God's led people into temptation. Or God's going to lead people into temptation. Whenever he uh, calls all who believe not the truth, calls them to believe the lie. Mm -hmm. The Bible calls the tribulation the hour of temptation.